Well, welcome to this edition of the Faith Roots Podcast. This is episode four of the Children's Ministry of Jesus, so let's just jump right in. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors. Uh, the Bible teaches that Jesus stood in each one of these offices. Was he a pastor? Somebody says, well, I don't recall Jesus saying that he was a pastor. Yes, he did. He said it in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. And the word shepherd is the word pastor. Uh, it is the same Greek word, different words in English, but they mean the same thing. Uh, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So this is the office of pastor that Jesus stood in. Now, his flock traveled with him around Israel. There were a group of people that were always with him, but he pastored people wherever he found them. And listen to Matthew's gospel, chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. So he saw the scattering as a negative thing. So when people are scattered and not gathered, uh, Jesus sees that they're vulnerable. And people today, even though they may be believers, if they're scattered, they're vulnerable. They're not safe until they're in a flock. That is what drives a pastor. He wants to pull them together. Uh, this is how I received my call to ministry. I knew I was going to be a pastor because I'd seen myself pastoring. Uh, but really when I took the step into this ministry was something I did not really intend to do. Our church had a bus ministry. I was already the youth pastor at the church, the janitor and any number of other things. Uh, but while I was sitting in an adult service one Sunday morning, our church had a new bus ministry, and my pastor interrupted his sermon to ask that a man go back to the children's church to sit with a couple of the little boys who were causing trouble for the teacher. And uh, the woman who was teaching was having a, difficult, having a difficult time corralling a couple of the little boys. So the pastor looked at me, and I knew he meant me go back there. So I went back there thinking I was going to do this one Sunday. I had no intention of doing this over and again. Last thing I wanted to do, I'm going to be in the real ministry. I'm not going to get caught with kids. But when I sat down in that room between those two little nine, ten-year-old boys who were fighting, and they weren't mad at each other, they were just distracted and we weren't paying attention, my heart went out to them. And I thought to myself, I know why they're not interested, and it's because the lady who's teaching doesn't connect with them. And she's doing the best job she can do. I get that. But she isn't effective. And if someone like me doesn't come along and take this up, they're never going to reach these kids. So I went to the pastor and I said, would it be possible for me to take these little guys, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, the old ones, they're the ones who are not listening in the class. The ladies that are teaching are sweet, but they only appeal to the younger kids. Can I have those older ones? And they didn't take too long to think about it. They came right back to me and said, yes, you can do it. And that's how I began my ministry to kids. I didn't know anything. And it's a blessing from God that I didn't know anything. There was nobody in to say, you can't do this. You can't burn a sacrifice in the middle of a children's church. You can't put the eyeballs of Samson out from a styrofoam wig head. You can't do that. Oh, yeah, you can too. <laughs> and I did crazy things like that. And the kids fell in love with my ministry. Now, they taught me. I didn't really teach them. They taught me because I didn't know about attention spans. I learned really quickly that you had to cut your lessons up into very short segments. I had to learn to use variety, that I had to do stories and puppets and illustrated sermons and music and games. I had all kinds of things that I used to hold the attention of those kids. But they were the ones who taught me by their response whether or not I was affected. I had to learn to use repetition. I didn't know that you had to write down what you wanted to teach in one simple sentence and make sure that everything that you communicate that day contains that one simple idea. A lot of teachers get up like a shotgun and they preach all over the Bible. You won't impart anything when you teach like that. Kids only learn when they hear things repeated again and again. I can show you that in Scripture. So uh, 
I learned how to teach kids, and it was the most effective thing I could have done for my adult ministry because a good communicator to children is a person who learns how to read his audience, which is what you have to learn to do to be a good communicator to adults. Now, this is a manifestation of the pastor's gift. I was called to those kids by what was in me. There was a drawing in me to want to take care of them and feed them. That's a pastor's gift. Here is it the, the same thing in Jesus, Matthew 23, 37. He is coming into Jerusalem. He sees the city and he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks together under her wings, but you were not willing. That's what a pastor does. He wants to gather people together. He's concerned about stickiness in the church. All right, now, listen to how he accomplishes this. Here's Peter talking about it in 1 Peter chapter 5. What is it that makes people want to come and stick? Here he is. The elders who are among you, 1 Peter 5, 1, I exhort, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd, uh, the King James says, feed the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. There are three things here that the pastor is told to do. Peter's telling you what they are. Number one, you got to feed. If you're going to be a pastor, you have to feed. And that's what a children's minister does. He learns to feed kids. If you're going to be a pastor, you have to lead. He's called an overseer. I was with my grandfather, who was a rancher. When I was a little bitty boy, when I was so small, I would stand up in the front seat of his pickup, and he and my step-grandmother would drive all over the ranch looking at their cattle. And uh, I couldn't see what he was talking about, but I still remember my grandfather had a good eye for the cattle, and he could tell if there was something amiss in any one of his cows. And he said to his wife, Anna, we've got to doctor that one. We've got to doctor this one. And so uh, very often he would have them follow him. He would throw cake on the ground and lead them into a pen. Once he got them in the pen, he would push that particular cow into a chute and he would give her a shot or put purple medicine on her. Uh, my granddad had a hat that was covered in purple medicine because it was nasty uh, stuff and it was hard to keep it from not spilling all over the place. And that was his work hat. So he had an eye for these cattle. He could see when they needed help. That's what a pastor has. A pastor senses uh, deficiencies in the flock. He can see that they need feeding in a particular area. And th that's the Holy Spirit giving him wisdom to go in a particular direction. So you feed and you lead. So that leading is that you're feeding with oversight. You're not just throwing out good material because it's good material, but you know that certain things need to be taught in certain seasons. And finally, you have to be an example. So that's the third element. You feed, lead, and model. Those are the three elements of a pastor's ministry. Feed, lead, and model. And so uh, that's what the shepherd is charged with doing, refreshing the sheep, steering the sheep away from strife. Uh, listen to Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. You can't restore people if they're caught up in turmoil and in strife. And sometimes you have to teach people to rest. A lot of people don't have that ability to immediately rest. They stay provoked. And the devil works against them by attacking their thoughts. And you have to show them how to resist those thoughts that come to set them into turmoil because turmoil is not from God. And you have to show people how to get a handle on your mind. That's what a pastor is good at. Pastor teaches people, don't receive every thought that comes into your brain. Not every idea that comes to you is from God. Not everything you think comes from God. 
Uh, there are devils out there. There are demonic spirits out there who want to influence people, and they do it with troubling thoughts. And so pastors have the mission to calm people down and teach them how to reject those troubling thoughts, not to receive them. Listen to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 29. He who troubles his own house will inherit the wind. And so you want to teach people to be at peace and to quit troubling themselves and all the others around them. That's what a pastor is sent to do. And that's what children's ministers are sent to do. A children's pastor is sent to do that. Well, this is one of the ministries of Jesus. He was an apostle, Hebrews 3.1, a prophet, Matthew 13.57, an evangelist, Luke 8.1, and a shepherd or pastor in John 10. So he stood in four of those five offices that we've read about in Ephesians 4. Uh, tomorrow, we'll get into the next one. I hope you'll join me then. I want to thank you for watching our podcast today. And if you really liked it, would you please give us a little thumbs up by clicking on that sign down below. And then I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future podcasts because they're all going to be good. And if you would like to support us financially, either with a one-time gift or recurring gift, you can do that by clicking on the link below are going to myfaithroots.com. Thank you so much for watching this program.